Alright, welcome to my channel. My name is Jeremy Lee and this video is made for you guys if you're a student in school and studying about history or you're just interested about history but maybe not too details. And today we're going to talk about the Minuan Civilization. Minuan Civilization known as the oldest civilization in Europe. In fact, they were probably the first European civilization that somehow recorded in a history. It's a part of the ancient Greek history. Now, Greek history itself is considered to be quite long period of a history. Historian must divide up the ancient Greek history into three parts. The Archaic period, Archaic, the Classical period, and the Hellenistic period. For the upcoming weeks, we will talk about the Archaic period. The ancient Greek itself, even though they no longer exist, somehow their influence are still present. Their influence are still influencing us in the modern times right now. Starting from the way we do math, the way we do science, the way we do logic, the way we do philosophy, and do we, the way we do politics, and even the way we build buildings, and the fact that somehow we are still using the alphabet, western alphabet, which is like A, B, C, D, all the way to Z, it's somehow influenced by the Greek culture. Pretty amazing, isn't it? 3,000 years ago, think about it, it's a very long time, and but then again, it still influenced us. Let's dive in into this Minuan civilization, like why they name it Minuan civilization? Oftentimes, I kind of like, you know, I got my tongue slipped and I mispronounce it as, instead of like Minuan civilization, I end up saying Minion civilization. Now, Minuan civilization, named after a mythical character, a mythical king, someone by the name of King Minos. King Minos from the Greek mythology. Yes, that's him. We will talk more about the King Minos later. The Minuan civilization can be found in the island by the name of the Crip Island. Now is in a modern country known as Greece. Now the Crip Island is, an, is located there, right there in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea. This is a very important sea in the ancient time. Think it this way. The Mediterranean Sea is just like the, the highway. It's the super highway. Whoever controls it, whoever get connected with the sea, uh, with the Mediterranean Sea, then that kingdom, that place, will, that city will become prosper and powerful. The information about the Minoan civilization is very scarce, it's very little, simply because it's too old. This, it, this civilization was existed somewhere around like, you know, 3000 BC, 3000 BC, that means it's about like, you know, 5000 years ago. And their civilization was being predicted that existed from 3000 BC until like 1000 BC. So they were thriving for about 2000-ish BC, okay? About for 2000 BC. Now, the Minoan civilization, they do not leave us any kind of like, you know, written record. Well, actually they did. They left us a written record. Unfortunately, up to now, we still do not know how to read their alphabet. Their alphabet known as the Linear A, it's the another variations of another alphabet that become like the, uh, the Proto-Greek alphabet known as the Mycenaean, uh, known as the Linear B alphabet. Minoan civilization using the Linear A, which is, we do not know how to read it. I think I'm going to show you guys the pictures. Probably, if you're watching this video and you know how to read it, please let me know, okay? Teach me how to read it. Now, it's quite challenging to know more about this Minuan civilization. So the most thing that we know about the Minuan civilization is known through someone by the name of Sir Arthur Evans. In the earliest of the 20th century, he's an archaeologist who dig in, who not dig in, who do some, who do some research about the Minuan civilization through the excavations in the Crete Island. What he found was a huge palace compound. It's already in ruins though. Was a huge ruins of a palace known as the Knossos Palace. The interesting stuff that he found from these ruins that this palace is a huge palace, has a lot of rooms, has a lot of like, has a lot of pillars, has a lot of like rooms, has a lot of pillars, has, has a lot of alleys, and then it's easy for you to get lost inside of these ruins. It's a very kind of like, you know, intricate building. Another thing that he found from this kind of a uh, palace that the palace was decorated with the beautiful paintings, a kind of a painting that using this kind of a technique known as the fresco painting. 
it produced a very kind of like colorful, a very vibrant colorful paintings. It was well preserved even thousand years later. If you look into this kind of like the artworks of the Minoan, they seems to be influenced by the Greek artworks. Only the difference is, if you see like this kind of like, you know, art, the Minoan artwork here, it seems to be they were influenced by the Egyptian artworks. Only the difference is on the theme. While the Egyptian artwork is dedicated for the religious purpose or for the official records, but for the Minoan civilization, the theme of the Minoan artworks is about daily life. It's about the dynamic of the life itself. Everything is just moving. Everything is just like, you know, very vibrant and very casual. The, for example, this famous kind of like, you know, dolphin or this famous one, a young man leaping over the bull. In a, it's kind of like a more kind of a daredevil kind of like an act, a circus act. And then this kind of like, you know, activities describing like the religious festival. What I'm trying to say, the theme of the Minuan artwork is about celebration about life itself. Now, from this ruins of the Knossos Palace, we learn that the women have a very important role in the society. Yes, the Minuan, they were still being ruled by a king, but the women also have an important role in the society. Let's talk about this palace itself. Now, the palace itself, as I said earlier, is a very kind of like intricate building. It has a lot of like alleys and it has a lot of like pillars and rooms. The function of this palace definitely, yes, number one is for the administrative purpose as the central of the government, but not just that one. It turns out to be, it it will be useful. It is also function as a storage. And another thing about the Minoan civilization, the cities in the Crete Island built by the Minoans were built without any walls. It means one thing, Minoan people, they were not afraid of any invaders. Just a common knowledge. Every cities that were being built in the ancient time, most of them, they were being built with the city walls. Now, what does that mean? The purpose of the city wall is to prevent any invaders of the city. Technically, what I'm trying to say is like this. You don't want to build your city without city walls during the ancient time. Because why? You'll never know when you are going to be attacked or invaded by another invaders. By building a city walls, you are protecting your city. You are protecting the inhabitants. And at the same time, it will make any invaders to think twice before they invade your city. Now for the Minoan civilization, for the Minoan cities, they do not have any walls. Perhaps, maybe because they were in an island. The Minoan civilization, known also as the sea traders, they are the masters of the sea during those time. They will travel with their ships to this neighboring island, to this neighboring kind of like, you know, cities and neighboring kingdoms, selling their goods. The goods that they produce were the olive oils. Another thing about the, we learn about the Minoan culture itself is the palace. I mentioned it before. As the palace itself is a very kind of like intricate building, has a lot of alleys, rooms, and, uh, and also pillars. It sparked the imagination of Sir Arthur Evans, and it probably it's also sparked the imagination of everyone who passed by on the ruins about a mythology known as the Minotaur. Now, Minotaur is a half beast, half human, half bull, half human according to the mythology king minus himself yes king minus he is a he's a mythological character probably he's not real probably yeah maybe there's a little truth on it but then again mostly he's is a fiction according to the mythology king minus he was a very powerful king one day he need to defeat his brothers he need to defeat his fellow brothers to become the most powerful king in the Crete island to make sure that he become like the most powerful king he asked for help to a sea god by the name of Poseidon, the Greek sea god by the name of Poseidon. Poseidon agreed to help him with one condition. Poseidon gave him a, a beautiful white bull. According to the plan, Poseidon asked King Minos to sacrifice this white bull back to him. Unfortunately, King Minos decided to cap this white bull. I don't know, maybe this white bull is cute. This white bull is considered to be like the most beautiful creature that King Minos had, uh, thing. And then it was must, must be like very kind of like, you know, very precious white bull. So he kept this white bull instead of kind of like, you know, instead of like, you know, sacrificing this white bull. Maybe he felt kasian. So, but instead, he replaced it with another bull, different bull that the one that given by Poseidon. He painted white and then he sacrificed it, hoping that he can fool Poseidon. Poseidon knew what King Minos tried to do. So Poseidon then cursed 
King Minus and his wife by making King Minus wife pregnant with a half monster, half human inside of her tummy. Now, as the baby was born, this baby had a had a head of a bull, legs of a bull, arms of a human. It was a monster. Now, King Minus, he was in dilemma. He was he was kind of like you know he was in dilemma. Dilemma. He was in dilemma. Dilemma. He was in dilemma. What how to pronounce dilemma? Okay, pronunciation is not my thing. He was in dile dilemma. <laughs> dilemma. <laughs> He was in, wait, I'm going to check my Google to, I mean, I'm going to check my Google machines to check the translation, I mean the pronunciation. Wait, all right. Let's try the pronunciation. Dilemma. Dilemma. All right. Dilemma. Dilemma. <laughs> Thank you. Should he throw away the baby or kill the baby or just keep this baby, this monster baby? Of course. As a father, he kept this monster. It's a, known as a Minotaur, okay? Minotaur, get it? Like Minos. Taurus, Taurus means kind of like bull, King Minus bull. So I'm pretty sure the name itself, yeah, it has a, it has a something to do with King Minus and the bull. He raised this half monster, half human as his own child. As this monster grew, he had an appetite. This monster had an appetite for human flesh. Now, if you're a king, uh, then you're going to have a trouble. Why? Because that means you need to keep constantly feeding your son a human flesh. At first, probably, yeah, he just kind of like, you know, he can just like randomly pick his random slave to, uh, and then fed to his son. But over the times, if he keep feeding his son with his subject, with his slave, eventually there will be rebellion in his city. So, as a father, King Minus, he need to, what he did next, he tried to conquering the neighboring city. He tried to conquering the neighboring kingdoms. Now, one of the kingdom that he conquered was a kingdom by the name of Athens. Now, there was a backstory about the Athens itself. There was a time that King Minos, he was so sad and he was angered. His son, he had another son by the way, his son died in Athens for kind of like, you know, another details for another reason. But anyway, he had a vengeance towards the Athens. Now, the king of Athens at that time was someone by the name of King Aegis. Now, King Aegis, he was being defeated by King Minos. Of course, King Minos, he's a very mighty king. Athens was defeated by Minoans and then as the, as the consequences, as the punishment, the king of Athens, the king of Athens, which is King Aegis, had to send seven boys and seven girls every year to Crete Island. Okay, depend, depends on whichever the version that you ever, that the, which version that you heard. Some said that it's every nine years, some said that every seven years. So to make things kind of like more uh, simple to remember the story, let's just say with the version that every seven years, King Aegis had to send seven boys and seven girls to King Minos to the Crete Island to be sacrificed to Minotaur. Oh, I forgot to tell you. So King Minos kept his son Minotaur in a place by the name of like a labyrinth. Now the labyrinth is a place that being designed by someone by the name of Daedalus. He was a genius. He create this place by the name of labyrinth, which is once that you go inside, it's so hard for you to get outside. And then now Minotaur living inside of this labyrinth. Whoever being sent inside of the labyrinth will not be able to get out from the, the labyrinth. So you will have to basically you have to play forever hide and seek with Minotaur. How a, what a horrible way to die, isn't it? And if Minotaurs caught you, then you will become Minotaur snack. So that is the plan of the labyrinth. So this seven boys and seven girls that being sent to King Minus will be thrown into the labyrinth and they will have to play hide and seek with Minotaur. And of course, would also become like Minotaur snack if they got caught. King Aegis had a son by the name of Theseus. He was a warrior. He volunteered himself to his dad. Dad, let me end this madness. Let me kill this Minotaur by volunteering myself to become part of the seven boys and seven girls that, you know, every seven years need to be sacrificed to Minotaur. Of course, King Aegis, he refused because, of course, is there any father who let his son be endangered like that? And so, Theseus, he convinced his father, Dad, I can, I get this. I've been practicing kind of like, you know, I've been practicing Kung Fu for entire of my life. Of course, I can defeat Minotaur easily. His dad finally convinced and Theseus promised to something to his dad. Dad, just watch this, okay? Ah, okay, of course, just watch this. If I return with my ship, and then you saw the white flag on my ship, the white flag that I will hoist it on top of the pole of my ship. If you see the white flag, it's a good news. That means I successfully killed Minotaur, I'm still alive. That means a good news for you, Dad. But if I died trying to kill Minotaur, 
and I will tell the sailor to hoist the black flag as a mourn. That means that means it's a bad news. That means I got killed. And so off he go, Theseus, alongside with the six boys and also with the seven girls, go to the Crete Island to be sacrificed to King Minos, to be sacrificed to Minotaur. As he arrived, he met a beautiful girl by the name of Ariadne. Now Ariadne is the daughter of King Minos. She was a beautiful princess and she helped Theseus. But before she helped Theseus, she made Theseus to promise to her that if Ariadne helped him to defeat Minotaur, then Theseus must take Ariadne away from Crete Island, take her back to Athens and marry her. That was the deal. That was the deal. And Theseus was thinking, yeah, cool, this is a good deal. I killed the bad monster, I get the beautiful princess. Awesome, Theseus said. Fine. So show me how to defeat your stepbrother. Ariadne helped Theseus by handing over to him a ball of silver thread. A ball of silver thread? Yes, a ball of silver thread. The purpose of this, this thread is goes like this. When Theseus get, get inside of the labyrinth, Theseus have to kind of like using this kind of like ball of thread that in that the end of the thread itself is being kept by uh, is being was being held by Ariadne. So the goal is after he defeat Minotaur, he can he can get up from the labyrinth easily by following back by tracing back the thread. So of course he defeat the Minotaur easily and then he get up from the labyrinth a lot by following the silver thread. Both of them they reunited and then of course as Theseus make a promise to Ariadne, so. They sneak out from the island, take Ariadne away from the Crete island, back to Athens. But somewhere along the way, Theseus got visited by another Greek ancient god by the name of Athena. Athena is the goddess of wisdom. She tell Theseus to leave Ariadne behind in an island by the name of Naxos Island. Well, depends on the, which version that you heard about this kind of like mythology. But uh, one of the versions said that somehow Princess Ariadne we're going to be married with another Greek god, someone by the name, uh, a Greek god by the name of Dionysius. Now, anyway, whichever the version that you ever heard before, now this is like troubled the heart of Theseus. Oh man, I have to say goodbye to this beautiful princess by the name of Ariadne. Well, Ariadne fell asleep in that island, and then Theseus, Theseus sneak out back into his boat, leaving her behind in that island. I'm pretty sure like the moment that Ariadne wake up, she's going to be very, very upset and going to be feel very, very sad about it. Well, Theseus too, he was so sad. Probably he was thinking about, he was thinking about Ariadne that he left behind in the island of Naxos. He continued his journey back to Athens to bring the good news to his father that he killed Minotaur to, to announce the news that, that the Athens that the people of Athens no longer have to sacrifice the seven boys and seven, seven girls every seven years. But he kept thinking about her. He was so sad that he had to say goodbye. He didn't even have a chance to say goodbye to Ariadne. As he was so sad, he forgot to replace the flag of his ship. He should hoist the white flag. But what he had instead was the black flag back in the coastline of Athens. King Aegis anxiously waiting for the returning of his son. As he was standing on top of the cliff, he saw finally the ship that taking Theseus back to Athens. As he saw the black flag, the father, King Aegis, thought Theseus died in attempt to kill Minotaur. He was so sad, his heart was broken, his heart was crushed because he thought that his son died. So he decided to commit suicide by jumping off the cliff. What a tragic end of the story. Now, that is the mythology that revolves around King Minos, Minotaur, Thesi our hero Theseus, Ariadne, and also the poor broken-hearted father by the name of Aegis. Now, there's this kind of like recurring theme that I would, I would like to brought up here. As King Minos had a son, even though it's a monster son by the name of Minotaur, but King Minos will do anything to feed his son because somehow no matter how no matter how grotesque no matter how hideous the son is king minus he loved his son no matter what now at the same time we also like see like the king Aegis who heavy-heartedly must let go his son Theseus trying to defeat Minotaur you, you see this recurring theme like the father loving the son the great love of the father toward the son now it's the same thing the sacrifice that our father in heaven did to us for God so loved the world that he willing 
to send his son, his only son, to die on the cross on our behalf. His son didn't deserve to die. His son was righteous, but he willing to let go his son to die on the cross. So now we can have the second chance to make peace with God the Father. Isn't that amazing? Isn't it beautiful? What about the minimum civilization? Like, you know, how come, like, you know, it's no longer exists up to now? Well, of course, minimum civilization ends because of the natural disasters. In the year around, like, you know, 1000 BC, circa 1000 BC, there was this kind of, like, you know, volcanic eruption by the name of Mount Thera. Now, the eruption of the volcano itself, it created an earthquake and also it created the tsunami. It it shattered, it damaged the palace, it, the, the city, and most of the city in the Crete Island, it was being swept away by the tsunamis. They lost many of their ships, they lost many of their kind of like merchant ships, and because of that one, the Minuan civilization, they never recovered from the damage. They no longer be as mighty as used to be. And over the times, the Minuan civilization, they were being invaded by another more aggressive people known as the Mycenaean people. Yeah, we will talk more about this Mycenaean people in the next video. Eventually, this Mycenaean people, they live in the Crete Island, and then after that, they're replacing the Minuan civilization itself. So, that's it. It's a wrap. Tell me what do you think about it. If you like this video, don't forget the like, and subscribe to, into this channel, because every week, I'm going to make a new video for the notification. Don't forget also to click the bells over there to get the notification straight into your device. There you go. Thank you for watching. I see you guys next time. God bless you. Bye-bye.